Well, I thought we'd kick off the second round with some work on vectors. So we've got two battleships here. A battleship A going at a speed of 1, minus 1, and B is going at a speed of 1, and a half, 2. However, what I've done, I've multiplied each of these components by t, so that displacement is velocity times time, so this now becomes a displacement vector and not a, a velocity vector. Same with this one. Um, then I thought we'd uh, have a look and put a point down here and create a circle based on that point and the distance between the two. So I'm just going to go to this extension here and that one and create the distance between the two. OK, so if we now select this and this and right click, create a circle. Now what I've done here, because t has been multiplied, t becomes a constant which can be played with on the constant controller. So I'm going to increase t and see what happens. So when does that green circle become smallest? Around about 1.8, 1.9. So that's one way of doing it. Um, a slightly more theoretical way to do it would be to let's get rid of that circle. I don't think we need that anymore. So I'm going to uh, reduce B to rest. I'm going to add the negative of this vector to ship B. So vector negative. B is now stationary. I'm going to add that vector to this one. Right click, vector, copy. So if I, add, if I add these two together and put the answer here, what I'm getting is the velocity of A relative to B. So let's increase t and see what happens. Right, it is closest to B here. So all we've got to do is find the closest point between this and this, and right click, point, closest point, and that is where the ships are closest. Now if we want to find out what, what value of t that is, let's just uh, decrease t again and use the fact that you can change this step very usefully and you can call in more, reduce again and get the answer exactly 1.838 I thought we'd have a look at differential equations now. It's one of my favourite topics in autograph. I mean, look how easy it is to put expressions in. y prime plus y equals x. That's the complementary function. That's the particular integral. And here are the solutions. So how does it work? Let's uh, start a new equation. It's just simple. y prime equals x. What's that going to do? The autograph way, of course, is to discuss this before you press OK. y prime equals x means the slope is equal to how far you are from the y-axis. So steeper over here, steeper over here, and zero all the way down here. OK, let's click OK and see what happens. Right, you can start from wherever you like, or you can put the slow plot on and have some fun that way. Or you can double click on this and have a look at the startup options. Uh, manual is what we're doing at the moment. Uh, you could use a point to move around, which is quite nice, or a point set, a set of points. Let's choose the y-axis just to tidy it up nicely. And there we have it. Each one of these, of course, is y is equal to half x squared plus a constant, and that could easily be put in and reviewed. So some other uh, ones that are quite nice to do. Um, equals y, for example. Well, what does that do? Well, that, that, of course, is the basic definition of the exponential function, so it's going to look fundamentally different to y prime equals x. And sure enough, it is. And that one is e to the x. What are all the other ones? a e to the x. You can discuss that. It is, of course, a, 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 a solution that goes to infinity as x increases. So it's going to be much more interesting to have y prime equals minus y. Then at least it's going to end up at 0. And then a really good point that uh, autograph offers is to rearrange this equation as y prime plus y equals zero. And that is your complementary function, and there it is, exactly the same solution, of course. And you can start putting things on the right-hand side, equals one, and so on, or equals x. And that's going to be 
uh, steady state of y equals x minus 1. Well, let's look now at some other forms of differential equation that you can put into autograph. So have a new page, and let's enter equation. Uh, y prime equals y over x. Well, what does this mean? Well, consider a single point here. The slope is equal to the line down to the origin. So it's just going to be a series of straight lines. Let's see if that does indeed happen to be the case. Yes. What about making this the perpendicular expression? Now, the perpendicular to y over x is minus x over y. So that should give us a whole series of circles. Oh, they're a bit elliptical, so we need equal aspect. There's some sli slightly more complicated ones that I've uh, prepared. Uh, here's one on terminal velocity. And without getting into too much detail, basically, if you double click on the axes, you get the edit axes. You can see what I've done. I've done the labels, changed the variable to t against v, and time and velocity. As soon as you do that, you can put it in an equation that represents uh, uh, v and t. So uh, what have we got here? This is a diagram of a, a, a person falling out of an aeroplane. And it's mg minus kv to the power of n equals m times acceleration. That's precisely what's put in here. Uh, I'm doing a solution from a point at the origin. We need to get the constants right, of course. Uh, if you double click on this, you can edit the constants. And g 9.81. Uh, well, near enough. Uh, K, 0.3, who knows? Uh, a bit of experimentation going on here. Uh, mass, 80 kilograms. N, 2 is quite a popular model, and we'll see if that works. Well, it certainly does very nicely. Um, and then you've got this line here, which represents when the acceleration is zero, in other words, terminal velocity, when that equals that. So you've got V equals the nth root of mg over K, which is exactly what we've got here. Uh, another solution that might be of interest is the predator prey one. Just put it in as dy by dx equals. Um, it looks fairly complicated, but uh, we've got some constants here, a and b, which represent the sort of eye of the storm. So we're looking for solutions. Let's put one here, and you can see how it goes around the cycle. And the a and b you can change with the constant controller, and that will simply move a and b. So if we move a from 2 to 3, it's going to move it to the right. Let's have a look now at some second orders. So this is a, a classic equation. If we just double click on that, you can see how it's all entered up. Um, because I've changed the variables to x against t, pressing x double prime gives you x double dot, and x single prime gives you x dot. And uh, uh, off we go. So I've also worked out the uh, auxiliary equation discriminant, and because of the 2 there, all the 4s disappear. So inside the square root is lambda squared minus n squared. At the moment, lambda is 1 and n is 1, so it's 0, and you get critical damping. Uh, let's just change the value of lambda and see, because lambda represents how much damping there is. If we increase lambda, so there's more damping, you still have exponential solutions. That's because the uh, roots of the auxiliary equation are real. As soon as they go complex, in other words, you get a negative value of, uh, of the discriminant, then you're going to get uh, sinusoidal results. So when lambda is 0, that's when you get a perfect SHM, of course, because there's no damping whatsoever. I thought we'd have a look at the cycloid. It's a pretty famous curve uh, of a point on a bicycle wheel as it goes around. Um, so here it is actually working, the finished thing, and over here I thought we'd just start from scratch. So here's a point. And there's a lovely new feature in Autograph, Manage Constants. You can actually assign a constant to an attribute. So uh, it sounds complicated, but I'm going to go Attribute, and I want to use the constant phi. And as with all these things, the interface, if you just tap on an object, you get its parameters or attributes. And there are only two because it's a point, and we want the x coordinate of that point to be phi. And add it in, got it, fantastic. So that means that we can use phi elsewhere, and its value will be driven by this point rather than the constant controller. So I'm going to put a point up here which is phi 1. So I'm going to 
um, edit the coordinate. No, I've got that selected, so I want to create a new point. Enter coordinates, and I'm going to do phi. Now I happen to know that phi is Alt F, but if you don't know that, there's always the trusty keyboard, and phi is down here. There it is, but Alt F will do the same thing. All right, and I want one, and off we go. That'll produce a point up here. Fantastic, and if I move this around, of course, it goes with it. That's really good. Now, if I d if I click on this and that, that's the center and the radius. I can ma make my bicycle wheel this way: circle, center, and point. Lovely. I'm now going to make an angle here, which is equal to phi, because the distance along the road is equal to the distance around this arc. And since we're in radians, that will equal, and this is a circle of radius 1, that will equal the angle here. So I'm going to create an angle, just visible, I think. There we are, yes. And the value is going to be phi, alt F. That should produce a point down here. No, I forgot. Make it clockwise. That's better. Uh, no, we're nearly there now, aren't we? So let's move it around, so we've got that. And all we've got to do, there are some lines you can put in as well, but if we select those two and ask for a locus, create locus, there it goes. And I'm going from zero to whatever, it doesn't really matter terribly, and there she goes. As we go along here, so it pans out that curve. Uh, now we could, if we double click on this one, you can see a bit more of it, we could put this in as a parametric equation. So we'll just show the key, so you can see what we're doing, and right-click, Enter Equation, and the equation is going to be, now T is the parameter we use in parametric equations. Startup options, let's go to 3 pi, and let's draw options, let's make it a bit thicker, so you can see what we're doing. OK, and off we go. So that's the analytical and the geometrical solution of a cycloid. To conclude this video, just to run through of what we've been doing, uh, this is the second order SHM equation, then we did the predator to prey, term of velocity exercise, uh, one of several differential equations that we explored, and then the basic first order. We start off with battleships. Mm -hmm.